Okay, so today I'm going to show you some useful tips and tricks for the Spring Cloud Dataflow shell. So the Dataflow shell is uh, built on top of the Spring Shell project, and as such, uh, already comes with a handful of uh, nice uh, features that you may or may not know about. One of them uh, is tab completion. So when you're in the shell and you have some available commands, then you can um, hit tab to complete various things. So for example, if I have an echo command and I type ec and then tab, then I get completion for uh, that command name. So I can say echo hello and it prints exactly what I've entered, which is hello. Um, you can also get completion for the argument names of your commands. So if we go into data flow land and do something like stream, create, give it a name like foo, then dash dash d e f, and then tab, then uh, I've got completion for the uh, argument name definition, and then I could type uh, the definition of my uh, command. So this is purely Spring Shell based, but then when it comes to data flow, the definition of a uh, stream is based on the data flow DSL, and then we we can get completion in there as well because this has been implemented um, in the specific data flow shell. So for example, uh, when I start to type my definition, I have some uh, apps registered, one of them being, for example, time. If I type ti tab, then I get completion for that because uh, the only one available uh, is time. I also get completion inside the, that DSL for the arguments to the time app. So if I do dash dash here, I can see that I have cron, date format, fixed delay, etc. So if I say initial delay, oops, three, and pipe, and uh, tab, I'll see all the uh, processors and syncs that uh, could go there. So I could say uh, transform, and then a pipe and say log, for example. So this is a completion inside the stream definition using the Dataflow DSL. As you can see, you're only proposed with the uh, completions that make sense at the point where you're pressing tab. So once you've entered the source, you won't get another source. Once you've entered uh, an argument, you won't have a pro uh, completion proposal for that uh, exact same argument, etc., etc. If you ever wonder about all the um, arguments that are available to some app, and that app comes with a uh, metadata explaining what what those arguments are available, you can do app info, and then uh, for example, for time, which is a source, you can say a source column time, and then you get the description of the main arguments to that app. So this is basic uh, completion that is available uh, in the shell, as well as uh, using uh, data for specific DSL completion. Spring Shell uh, being built on top of JLine also comes with a few uh, useful um, shortcuts that you may or may not know about. Um, one of them, for example, is uh, Control R, so you can do reverse search using Control R. Uh, so if I type stream, it start to get my uh, previous um, definition. You also get Control E, Control A, and all those Emacs. Uh, shortcuts that you may know about and you certainly know a lot. Okay, so this is about completion and tab completion in the shell. Another uh, topic that is often uh, interesting to look at in the shell is the way quotes are used, how you can uh, embed spaces and special characters in, uh, in values. So if I um, want to, for example, 
pass a value with a space, um, I can do echo hello world. Okay, and then it prints hello world. And you can see I use double quotes here, but I could as well use single quotes. And notice how the value that is printed doesn't contain the quotes because it's the string hello space world. Um, actually, because uh, the echo command is being used without uh, its uh, dash dash key, which uh, happens to be named what, so if I say hello world, I need the quotes here, but if I don't use uh, the dash dash what, because that's the special key, I could do hello world without uh, quotes. But this is uh, just because this is the uh, keyless argument. So we saw that we can use uh, either uh, double or single quotes, and this is all Spring Shell based. There is nothing data flow specific here at the moment. Obviously, if you want to embed um, single quotes in, in what you're typing, you better use um, double quotes. So I can say I'm here, surrounding with double quotes and adding a single quote inside, um, or the other way around if you like. But you can also, uh, if you need to, escape those values. So you can say he said hello. And then you can see when the value is printed that it does contain the quotes. Mm -hmm. So this is Spring Shell escaping rules. But then when we combine that with uh, data for DSL, this is when uh, things may get a bit complicated. So we have a special uh, section in the reference documentation about that, that explains everything how uh, the shell rules apply, so basically what I just said here, and how the DSL parsing rules apply as well, and how they play uh, together when you, when you combine the two. So we discussed the spring shell quoting rules. Now let's see how they combine with the Dataflow DSL rules. So in Dataflow DSL, we pass the arguments to an application based on spaces. So if the value of your arguments needs to contain spaces, you need to put them inside quotes. As an example, if we have this uh, definition of a string, and we want to say, payload, this is perfectly okay, because there is no space here. But we could also say payload inside single quotes or double quotes, and all of the three are strictly equivalent, and what the value of expression is, is payload without the quotes. So it is not a string literal, it's uh, actually going to resolve to the expression of payload. So the quotes are uh, obviously not part of the value. If you do want to put quotes in the value, then you need to uh, use two of them to uh, embed them. So again, if you don't have spaces, uh, this may not be necessary. So. If we have something like, uh, let's say, filtering. So if we want to filter on values that are foo, then we could do this. We could do payload equals, equals foo. And notice how all of this is one value without any spaces. So it's not very legible. But given that there are no spaces, it's uh, resolved as a single token. 
So we could do that, but uh, it's not very legible. So another option is to put some spaces here so that it's uh, easier to read. And we could do, so given that we've put spaces, we need to put quotes there, but then we need to uh, escape those. So we need to double them. So this would be another solution. The single quote here and here are to protect the whole expression thing. And then this will resolve to a single, single quote. One before foo and one after foo. Another option would be to use double quotes. So we could do that. But given that we're inside the shell, then there are double quotes here and at the beginning as well. So we need to use what we learned previously and escape those. So all of these three options are similar in behavior in that they will test uh, for the payload to be the string literal foo, and they all resolve to the same behavior. This is how um, spring shell escaping and quoting rules combine with the DSL quoting rules. I hope you've learned something useful today and looking forward to showing more tips and tricks.